I have removed all of the static NAT commands from R1. We're using those same two interfaces, 10.1.1.2 and 10.1.1.22, both with 32-bit masks. And let's dive in. Before we configure anything else, what are we going to do? IP NAT inside, interface loopback 22, IP NAT inside, interface serial 0 and 0. It's probably a good reason I'm reminding you of those. So we've got those in place and now we're going to build our pool first. So we've really got to do three things. We've got to create an access list identifying the host that can use NAT. We've got to write an IP NAT inside statement which mentions or calls that list name or number, whichever one we give it, and calls the pool. So the first thing we really should do is configure the pool first. Besides that's the most long-winded command we have here. And with IP net, what we're doing right there is in the middle. IP net pool, define pool of addresses. And we got to give it a name. We're going to call our CCNA because that's where we're going. And start IP address. So you're not going to enter each IP address that you want in your pool individually. You got to give it a range. So we're going to go with 200.111 through 200.115 with a 24 bit mask. And then your end address obviously. And then your net mask or prefix length, I'm going to go with net mask here. And then your network mask. Had I gone with prefix length here, let me show you that choice. You can see 1 through 32, so I would have put 24 there. Actually, I'll just do it right there. But I could have put network mask 255, 255, 255, 0, and you're looking good. So we've got that in place. Now let's write our access list. Now, what exactly should my ACL look like? Let's say I'm going to use number two. And I'm gonna, what should it look like? What should ACL2 look like when I'm done? Permit host 10.1.1.2. Or you could have used 10.1.1.2 and then put four zeros after it. That would have been fine. And I don't need anything else because I'm just going to go with the implicit deny. So right now, these two hosts are the only hosts that can have their addresses translated by NAT. Now let's do the third step, which is the IP NAT inside command. And we're going to use source again here. And here's where it changes from static NAT because we're going to use list here and then the name or number. Then you've actually got to put the word pool. Notice though that we have an option for interface. Specify interface for global address. Hmm. We're going with the pool though because that's what we're doing. And then you simply name the pool that you just created. And you've got some options there that we don't need. And it's in place. Now we got to send some pings. And we'll send them across our little cloud to 172.12.123.2 and check those translations. But if I do that right now, well, let me just do it. Okay, I sent the ping over from router 1 over to router 2. We know what address that is by now. Router 2 is serial interface. Pings go through, no problem at all. But I don't have a translation. Why don't I have a translation? Because the source address of those pings is what? It's 172.12.123.1. By default, the source IP address of a ping is going to be the address of the interface that it's leaving. So that's when we have to use a little bit of an extended ping. We're going to use an option here with our ping command, 172.12.123.2. I know you remember this one, and specify the source. And I could put loopback 2 and 22 here if I wanted to, but instead I'm just going to put the IP address. We have some other things we could do there, but this is the only thing we really needed to do. So let's go with 10.1.1.2. Pings go through just fine. And now let's run show IP NAT translation. That's why I usually shorten it up. And you see we've got a couple of entries here, and sometimes you might actually have more than this when you're sending pings. Because this is an ICMP translation officially, but you'll notice that even though a port number is mentioned here, with a colon 6, the inside global entries are the same. So our mapping is working just fine. Our mapping was 200.111, that's the first address that it pulled out of the pool, 
and the inside local that just sent it was 10112. So you have to get used to the fact you could see multiple entries here for the same inside local address. Now as far as outside local and outside global, note that they're the same. And you're going to see that sometimes. Sometimes in this case you wouldn't see anything because we're not running NAT over on router 2. There's no translation involved. So we're really concentrating on the inside information here. And again, the mapping was successful. But we did it with a pool. And now if we send another ping over from our other friend, then we should get a different address from the pool. It should come out in order. So it should be 200.112. Let's go ahead and just add a 2 to our long ping here. And there you go. So we moved up one port number and also note that the original ICMP mapping is gone for 200.111 and now we're left with the mapping we expect 10.112 to 200.111. And here is our mapping for 10.1122, the one we just sent, and it's been mapped to 200.112. Just that simple. You may run into a situation though. <laughs> There's always something, right? This is networking. You may run into a situation. What if you... Um, you have some addresses that hang in the pool too long. You just want to clear it out, or you've got, you know, you could have a situation where you have 10 hosts, but you got five routable addresses. Well, if you set up dynamic NAT for that, sooner or later, you're going to have somebody, you know, that needs an IP address that doesn't have one. The moral of this story, what I'm getting to at, is if you want to clear this table of all the dynamic entries, run clear IP NAT trans, and you do have some options here but I would go with the asterisk, delete all dynamic translations, and there you go. And now if you run show IP NAT trans, you have nothing. That's a handy thing to have to be able to use once in a while, clear IP NAT trans with an asterisk. Now I didn't run that when we ran static NAT because this only gets rid of dynamic translations. Your static ones are in there for as long as you leave them in there, and that's why I took them out before we started this lab. So that situation that I just described, you know, multiple hosts and you only have so many IP addresses, or maybe you don't have any routable IP addresses to spare. Maybe you don't have any to hand out, but you still need to use NAT. Well, what you can do then is use a little variation of NAT called PAT, Port Address Translation. We're going to talk about that and configure it coming up next.